the fifth and final video is we're going to end with a comedy. Why not? Right? We'll have a little pick me up at the end. Maybe. I haven't seen this before. <laughs> But it is Taylor Tomlinson's PSA on arm floaties. Uh, And I think it's from a comedy special on Netflix. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'm hoping this doesn't get this entire video blocked. If it does, I'll just edit that uh, accordingly. So there might be some editing on these live streams, uh, especially now because I didn't upload the individual videos to see if they would get blocked. But... I'm assuming this won't, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, yeah, okay, I got it. It's This is going to take time to learn how to be like a producer. Now I know why people hire producers as well, to like hit the buttons in the background so you don't have to like stare over here and figure out if I'm hitting the right buttons and I already screwed it up once. <laughs> All right, let's go talk about it on stage uh, and then I needed new material and I was like fire sale everything goes <laughs> no truthfully I was surprised that I felt so bad about it because I think I'm pretty open-minded and I I don't think anybody should feel bad if they get diagnosed with a mental illness because it's just information about you that helps you know right. how to take better care of it's yourself true. yeah being bipolar, there's nothing wrong with it. Being bipolar is like not knowing how to swim. It might be embarrassing to tell people, and it might be hard to take you certain places. <laughs> <laughs> but they have arm floaties. <laughs> and if you just take your arm floaties, you can go wherever the hell you want. True. And. I know some of you are like, but Taylor, what if people judge me for taking arm floaties? Well, those people don't care if you live or die. So maybe who cares? That's a maybe good point. fuck those people a little. <laughs> I don't know. That was a good point. That being said, you have to take your arm floaties. <laughs> because it's not cool to know you can't swim, go to the public pool anyway, and jump into the deep end, making it everyone else's problem. Right. And you're thrashing around going, I'm good, I'm good. They're like, you're literally drowning. <laughs> and then someone nice and handsome jumps in to help you. And you're like, see, I'm fine. I can totally swim. And they're like, no, you're holding him underwater. <laughs> you turned Kevin into an arm floaty. And that's not a fair relationship for Kevin. <laughs> then someone floats by you on their back and you're like, what was that? And they're like, oh, that's someone whose parents supported them in the pool. Until they could be trusted not to die. Right, right. Here are your arm floaties. <laughs> Very well said. Oh my gosh. Link down below in the description. For the original video. Go throw it some love. Link down below in the description for the original video. Go throw it some love. I don't know if you heard me on that. That was so loud. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty amazing. That is very, you know, mental illness obviously is something that's getting talked about more these days. Um, people are more comfortable going to therapy and getting it diagnosed and whatnot. And Although I do kind of, I do look at the pharmaceutical, you know, pill versions of treatment and whatnot. And I just go, some of those might be worse than the cure. <laughs> like some of those might have some pretty gnarly reactions. Like... I forget what pill it was to treat depression. Um, and one of the side effects was increased ending yourself thoughts. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Isn't that what you're trying to get away from? Like that's a side effect of something that is trying to stop you from doing that? Like what? So some of these... Some of these pills, I'm just like, I don't know if the side effects are worth it. Like, if you get a side effect of that, you got to get off it, like, immediately. But with those kind of drugs, you can't get off it immediately. You have to, like, wean yourself off or something or wean yourself on. So it's all very <laughs> tricky to figure out what is specifically needed and what is something you should stay clear away from. Um, but it is a very personal 
thing. Like you can't, as much as people want to help you, you know, help out, um, it's very much a personal struggle. And some, that kind of reminds me of, uh, shameless and, uh, Ian going through that and what his mom went through. It's very much a personal struggle. You can have people around you that support you and try to, you know, pick you up when you're down and, you know, provide a stable environment for you and all that stuff. But it's, it's very personal struggle. Like if you're going through it, you got to go through it yourself, right? That's the one crazy thing about life. You can have people around you. You can be surrounded by love and stability and all that stuff. But if something ain't right up here, it's only you that knows and is going through it. You know, people can try to understand it, but there's a limitation there, right? It's very much very similar to the, um, well, you don't want to die alone, right? And it's just like, we all die alone. Like, unless you're going out together in a blaze of glory, uh, it happened. It's a very insular thing. Um, you can have support around you, which is probably very nice. Uh, but you're the one, you're the one going. So part of that's just kind of hollow. <laughs> I don't mean to be a downer on that, but, or a downer on this, but you do go through it alone. Um, and hopefully you do come out of it better or at least figure out how to manage it in a way that you can interact with others. Very much like the arm floaty things, like you take the arm floaties and you're you're able to go out and do things and go places and you got a little security blanket with you. But even that, you know, it's not a guarantee for anything. Um, that was such a great analogy. That was almost less of a comedic routine and almost just a wonderful analogy for going through that which is the beauty of stand-up comedy a lot of the times is it's little truths within jokes and they try to stretch out the jokes or the uh the truth to make it funny or interesting um i just went to a stand-up comedy show recently Uh, i saw david spade at the theater downtown super funny uh, it was mostly just him with like a list of topics to hit on. And uh, <laughs> what was kind of funny is the fact that he he would start talking about something that happened like months ago. And he goes, you know, oh, these are very current, you know, topics. And he would list off something so old, like current event that was so old. <laughs> and everyone just kind of chuckle at it. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty old. Let's talk about this instead. And he would go to something much newer. Um, he was very much figuring out, I don't know if that's his entire act where he just kind of spitballs on current events or something, but it seemed like he was working material, which is interesting for a theater. (laughs) Usually you do that at like a comedy club or whatever, but maybe that's his tactic. I've never seen him live. I've never, you know, witnessed that. Um, the only other stand-up comedians I've seen was Bill Burr, and it seemed like Bill had an act, uh, an hour-long act that he was working on, but it was somewhat polished and soon probably going to be in a special. Uh, Another one that I watched was Mike Birbiglia, and his was very much a finished product. Like, eventually that... I forget what it was called. It was um, the new one, I think it was called, and that eventually became a Netflix special. So I saw the special before it happened just because I saw him touring, which was very cool. And I'm actually going to see him again, which I'm assuming is going to be another special, um, just because I don't think he tours unless it's ready to go, or at least somewhat like 95% of the way there. So that'll be interesting. That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I do enjoy stand-up comedy and going out. It's a fun night on the town. You know, you get a couple chuckles. Um, Obviously, it's better to go with somebody else. I went alone to the uh, David Spade show, and it was still funny because you're surrounded by people. And that's kind of the weird thing about laughing is it's it's sometimes hard to laugh by yourself. So if you're watching a video completely isolated, 
it takes a lot to really laugh out loud at it unless you're just comfortable and you're, you know, just in the moment. Sometimes I've watched a few comedy movies and because I was alone, I didn't really laugh out loud much. Or I'd go like, huh, and that's it. Meanwhile, you watch that same movie with like four people and you're outwardly laughing. You're just dying laughing. It's very weird how it's a very social response. It's almost like clapping, like, you're not going to clap by yourself at something. But if there's people around and they start clapping, you'll start clapping. Or maybe you start clapping and then everybody starts clapping. It's very strange. (laughs) 